I want the Lord to say, well done. Some of you have talents. And when you get to heaven, you won't have finished them. And when you stand before the throne of God, he's not going to say, can I hear your list of excuses? And you know one thing spiritual mothers do? They have spiritual ambition for the next generation. They will say, stand on my shoulders. Let my ceiling be your floor. Go out and see further and do further. Listen, I'm 70, Patricia's 70. Some of us are aging. I don't know how old you are. Are you telling Bonnie? Oh, you're a babe, 68. But, you know, I don't know how long given, God's given us the health and strength. I intend never to retire. I mean, this month I'm going to Dominican Republic this week, and then I'm going to, I don't know how many cities, Argentina, like four days after that. You know, but, but I want to say to you, I have ambition for you. Every single one of you was created with a purpose, a destiny in God's image. And tonight, I've got, it's just such a simple message to give you. But I want to say, I believe in you. And you could do something great. And our generation that's here, of these leaders speaking, we could proudly say, stand on our shoulders. We can say, look at our marriages. We can say, look at our finances. I mean, we just had a full-blown audit. We have full-blown audits of generals, our ministry. And every year, we're squeaky clean that we do that. $18,000 later, but it's worth every penny. Because I can look you in the face, and I can say we are ethical. We have character. We don't waste anybody's money. There's a story in the Bible that talks about David. And David went to battle, and he was tired. I'll just paraphrase it for you. And the Bible says that his, the younger men around him looked at him and saw that he was weary. And there was a son of Goliath that came, and he had a new sword, and he was going to kill David. But Abishai, watching out for his father, the king, and he killed that giant. But you know why he could kill that giant? He could kill that giant because there was a precedent that David set that became a promise in the next generation. If David could kill a giant, I could be a giant killer. And I want to say to you, there are precedents by Michael and Gall. There are precedents that have been set by Patricia King and now Wendy. There are precedents that have been set that now we can surely say to you, stand on our shoulders, do what we have done, but do it greater and do it better and do it more. Hallelujah. I want to tell you a friend of mine. Her name's Janet Porter. Janet worked for the pro-life movement. And she went and she was so shy. Everybody said she would never be able to make a speech. And so she'd get up and she'd try to give a speech. And she just couldn't give a pro-life speech. But she never gave out. And finally, she became a young woman in the state of Ohio that God gave a vision called the heartbeat bill. And she she found out that a baby's heart uh, starts beating at 15 days. And she began to put legislation in all across America. I think some 20 states have adopted now that you cannot abort a baby after 15 days. She went from being a girl who could not speak in public to a woman that changed America. And you can do it too. We were just in uh, Washington, D.C. We had a a day at a time, and Janae and I went, and we went to Mount Vernon. You know what Mount Vernon is? Maybe you have people from other countries, but it was home of George Washington. 
and it was a beautiful, beautiful home. Well, in 1853, there was a woman named Louisa Bird Cunningham. She was on a steamship, and she was going down the Potomac, and she looked up, and she saw Washington's home. It was completely decrepit, falling apart. And she wrote her daughter these words. If the American men of America have seen fit to allow the home of its most respected hero to go to ruin, why can't the women of America band together to save it? She wrote this to her daughter, Anne Pamela Cunningham. And what happened was they formed the Mount Vernon Ladies Association and they raised 200,000, which we're going to have any million, and they purchased the mansion in 200 acres. And when you go to Mount Vernon today, and 94,000 people walk through that place every year, and they remember what George Washington did, the father of our nation, it was due to a handful of women. Every state today has a representative in the Mount Vernon Women's Association. It just takes one. One to have a dream, one to have a vision, one to have a voice. And when God gives you that, you become infectious with that vision. It consumes you. You cannot let it go. It's something that lives inside of you. And that's how I feel about the next generation. I am now consumed with you. I must have legacy. We must have legacy. We have paid the price. And some of this has been a very, very hard price. There was times I went to nations early in the days. I first went to Argentina in 1939. And God just gave me the nation. I can't explain it all except things would happen like a young man named Abraham was then in the first time I went, he was there in the group. And it was amazing because so many people came to that meeting in Argentina from just a little ad in the Christian newspaper. Buses came from thousands of miles. They expected maybe 30 people. We had a, huh? 1990. We had a thousand. <laughs> Did I say 39? <laughs> Gee, I'm better looking than I thought. <laughs> Thank you, Wesley. And so, anyway, so 1990. And I was, but I was 39. Yeah, I was 39 years old, okay, when I went. So thank you for clarifying that. Anyway, so, you know, we got there, and I began to teach how to heal a nation. And I noticed pastors were crying. They were just crying, sitting around crying. And I thought, that's strange. I'm not saying anything that sad. And, uh, you know, afterwards, this young prophet Abraham came up. He was an indigenous man from the bush. He couldn't hardly speak Spanish. He couldn't read or write, except he could read the Bible. But God would give him visions, and he would write on the blackboard what God would tell him. And it was perfectly punctuated. He had no idea what it said, and he'd give it to people. Well, he said two years after he got born again, an angel appeared to him in a 30-foot pillar of fire and showed him a woman that would come to Argentina and bring revival to that nation. And so God told him to get on a bus and go visit different of the pastors. And he would go tell them and describe this woman and they'd throw them out of, out of their offices. And that day they were there in that room and they'd had a perfect description of me because God went before me. And when God gives you something to do, he will go to extreme lengths to go before you. Amen? Amen?